I want some of y'all for sure. Cause you are good. I want some of y'all for sure. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. This is Marcia and Compton. I'm your girl, Kayla. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe for more videos about Black entertainment, Black womanhood, whatever I'm supposed to talk this week. All right, let's get right in to it. So this is the first brown sugar commentary video of the year. Welcome to 2023. We are hoping that this year is going to be yet another year of ranting raving and educating the girls okay happy new year happy holidays to all of my brown sugar commentary fam okay hope you guys are going to have a wonderful and prosperous new year and we are only yet less than a week into the new year and obviously foolishness are gone and we must discuss um we will be talking about our favorite topic on this here channel which is you guessed it good old-fashioned colorism okay so recently there's been a video that has been circulating all over twitter um it's an interview between mana leo who is a rapper best known for we not humping in the remix with flo millie um but she's been making rounds as a rapper for the past year or so really blowing up and such and she was in an interview with megan james who was of bad girls club fame if you know you know um because what was she cabo i want to say she was the year of cabo right with um Rima and that girl is what I don't understand that season right um and then um I don't know the guy in the video but it's kind of irrelevant um who he is honestly um but basically the videos are making rounds because Megan decides to ask Mauna Leo um does she believe in colorism and right there we already know we're off to a rocky start because when you phrase that question in that way, it's almost as if it doesn't exist. She's trying to talk about it as if it's a conspiracy theory or it's some type of, you know, three-eyed monster or a unicorn of some kind. Like, colorism is very much a real thing. So to ask if somebody believes in it is, is already setting it up as if colorism isn't real. Like, it's some type of fun little quirky, like I said, conspiracy or mythical creature. Like, okay, so she asks her if she believes in colorism so she says not only does she ask does she believe in what colorism but does she believe that skin tone plays a part in somebody being successful in the music industry and so my layer replies and she says obviously that yes i do believe it exists and that or she says it's very much real and that yes people of lighter complexions more often than not um are the most successful ones in the music industry um to which megan james then goes on to kind of make it as a rebuttal which i don't know how this has anything to do with what the topic at hand but she's like well when i was in school people said i wasn't black enough and what does that mean when people say i'm not black enough and um you know people were saying and like mana was like yeah that's like bullying for sure but it's not colorism and she's trying to say well guess it is because you know people like to think that light-skinned girls don't go through stuff but we go through stuff too and trying to call reverse colorism and both mana and the guy in the situation are looking at this girl like what the hell are you talking about like be be so for real right now and you know like i said molly is really keeping her composure and trying to almost validate megan's feelings which she does not have to do but you know she's there going on and talking about her experiences and like i said then she goes on to talk about her experience with white people and saying well white people be talking about she's pretty for a black girl and all of that or other black girls be talking about oh oh are you mixed with something and she hates when people act if you're mixed with something and all of that um but back to her conversation about white people and saying oh pretty for a black girl kind of thing and both Montaleo and the guy once again says this is not colorism that's just regular racism like girl what are you talking about and that's kind of where the clip ends for the most part um but it just infuriates me because for several reasons because like i said number one the fact that she even asked it it's just like girl where are you getting at number two when did megan james become a journalist that's the problem that i thought we need if we had to make a list of things to leave in 2022 that would be that stop having people who do not have the range to speak on certain things especially a topic as serious and as triggering as colorism can be stop asking people to do not have the range to facilitate those common conversations because 
who act why 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 does she have the authority to ask those type of questions why is she like what what's going on here and it's like how do you take a conversation about light-skinned women basically having an advantage in the industry and then center yourself in it you centered yourself in it as if you're trying to discredit what Monalea was saying because she's you're trying to say, I feel like, that, oh, I don't have this privilege that y'all speak of because growing up, I was bullied. And it's just like, that's unfortunate, but that's not colorism. By definition, that is not colorism. I'm so sorry that happened to you, but it's not colorism. And you know that at this point. Like, at this point. In 2023, the year of our Lord and Savior. Like, be so serious. It's just like you, instead of, like I said, giving Mona Leo the platform to speak on her experiences as a dark-skinned artist and how, yes, if you look at the music industry, as I've spoken on this channel countless times, not when you look at who dominates the music industry, not just in rap, but just in music, who, what shade of like brown are like what color are they? They're usually light, bright, damn near white, <laughs> if not just light-skinned, right? And that's not to discredit the people who end up you know, becoming at the top because yes, they are talented for sure. But our women cannot be mediocre. They have to be the best of the best at everything they do. It's like, you can, like I said, literally look at any entertain any, anybody in the entertainment industry that's really, really successful. You know that they have to be at the top of their A-game. Look at Viola Davis. Viola Davis had to take so much subpar roles for damn near, it felt like 20 years before she really start blowing up in the entertainment industry because they had no choice because she does so freaking well. It's like same thing with Angela Bassett. When you think about Angela Bassett, you're thinking this is one of the best actresses in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's very hard for... And that's like I said, that's that's just acting. When it comes to music, I can't really name you too many dark-skinned... Like, too many dark-skinned female artists that I can remember really dominating in the ways that I've seen light-skinned women do the same. Right? It's like... It comes to... Going back to rap, you have, when you think about today's female rappers with Flo Millie, with Mana Leo, with um, Callie, um, and um, as I've already mentioned Cash Doll in a previous video and Dreezy, um, but when you think about all of these dark-skinned black female rappers, they are not seeing the success of a Doja Cat of a big lotto, of a Nicki Minaj. Like, it's just not a thing. And that's not to say that those women that I just mentioned, the light-skinned women, that they're not as talented, right? They're they're completely, obviously, I've, I've talked about, you know, liking Doja Cat. I think Lotto's great. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, Nicki Minaj is Nicki Minaj. But I'm saying a lot of why they were given, afforded the uh, opportunities in the music industry that they were is all wholeheartedly because of their looks. When you think of the music industry, a lot of it is doing dealing with um, marketability, right? Um, usually, a person's gonna sign an artist because they think that they're marketable, because they think that people are going to like their look and obviously buy their music and whatever their merch to go to their concerts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so many of these record labels, even in twenty twenty three do not think that dark-skinned women are profitable. So even if they do sign them, it's usually for like a quota or to say, hey, we have diversity. Same thing when people try to hire black people and try to put them in the room, but they don't give them anything to do. It's the same thing. You have these dark-skinned female artists, they either have to advocate for themselves or go independent or something like that because these record labels are not pushing them the same way they're pushing the light-skinned artists. So it's just like, what are you talking about? And it's like, even when you think about some light-skinned people, some light-skinned artists who are not that great and are pretty mediocre. The only reason why they probably got a shot compared to others is because they were light-skinned. And that usually, like I said, when we talked about my previous video, I already made an entire video talking about music, like the music industry and colorism. But to go back to that video, in that video, I talked about the whole signed debacle, which was a VH1 reality competition series with Rick Ross. And he was trying to find the first lady of MMG. And it was a scene where this girl named Brittany and I think the other girl's name was Kaya. And they were both um, given like the same song or same sample. And um, 
you could clearly tell that the dark skinned girl Kaya sung way better than the Britney girl, but because Rick Ross was attracted to her and she was lighter skinned, she got been she was told that her use of the sample was better when it was very painfully obvious that Kaya's version was way better. Um, but that's just a great example of how the music industry works. Either it is these male artists who are, you know, pretty powerful, have a lot of pull in the industry, they're the ones putting on these women. Or, like I said from the beginning, the A&R, the music, the, the um, record labels are the ones who are, you know, signing these light-skinned biracial girlies, like, right? And so, it's like I said, it's completely asinine for Megan James to have that comment. Like somebody even said, it's privilege and colorism within itself for this woman to be asking this question to begin with, like I said, who literally doesn't have the range. And like I said, instead of listening to what Monaleo had to say about her experiences and really go in, you decided to center yourself and try to invalidate the fact that colorism does exist. Because like I said, reverse colorism is not real. It's the same thing to say a white person coming to you and talking about reverse racism. And it's just interesting how black folks can understand racism, like completely understand that part of it. But when it comes to colorism, it's like so confusing because even the comments under this video and the nastiness that Monaleo has received for you know, essentially standing up for herself. And like I said, she could have went nasty with it because that's what I would have did. I would have been so nasty. Oh, I would have been nasty. Oh. But it's like, even in that situation, how she's the one that's receiving some backlash when she's technically the victim, it just speaks volumes onto what people think colorism is. And to sit there and act like it's not real. It's like every time a dark skinned person talks about colorism, there are one or two, there is one or two responses. It is either what Megan James said, which is the whole, well, I was bullied by black people to say that I wasn't black enough. And it's like, okay. And then the other one is light skinned men who will say, well, women don't want to date me because they think I'm too soft. And it's like, or people will make fun of me because they think I'm feminine and too soft. And it's just like, you don't see how you being called too soft then harms dark-skinned women who are on the other side of the spectrum because they are perceived as too masculine, too aggressive, too angry. You don't see how that works. And it's like, the reason why reverse colorism doesn't exist is because you're essentially comparing apples to oranges. What you're comparing to as like little playground bullying, which again is wrong, but it's not the same as little dark skinned girls who go missing and they don't get protection because they're not pretty enough or they're not perceived as whatever, or little dark skinned girls who get harmed and get assaulted and once again are not viewed as victims because they're viewed as masculine, viewed as essentially not even human. You cannot compare you not getting girlies because they think you're feminine because to, to dark-skinned people who get harsher sentences, who don't get afforded job opportunities, who, like I said, overall get viewed as violent and aggressive people. Like, you don't get to... Those two things are not the same thing. One is literally a system of oppression. And like I said, the other one is like playground bullying. Playground, like, at worst, discrimination. But like I said, at least it's just kids being stupid. And it's just like... What, 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 what? Why don't you understand? It's like, you understand, because I think what it ends up happening is because we refer to things as like light skin privilege or saying that light skin people have an advantage, that all of a sudden they're no longer black and that they don't experience racism because that's not the case, obviously. You, intersectionality is real, right? You can be um, privileged in some ways and disenfranchised in other ways. Like, a lot of us have like I said, aspects of our personality or aspects of our, or identities of ours that are technically privileged. Like if you're cisgendered, that's a privilege. If you are heterosexual, that's a privilege. If you grew up 
like middle class, that's a privilege. If you grew up with two parents, that's a privilege. If you're Christian in a sense or Catholic, that's a privilege. There are many ways, but obviously if you're black, if you're poor, if you're a woman, if you're gay, like you see what I'm saying? There's all these facets to our identity that like I said, they intersect and where a lot of ways we can be privileged, but we can also be disenfranchised in many other ways. And so it's just like nobody's saying because you're light skinned, you're no longer a black person, you no longer go through racism. Or if you're a woman, a light skinned woman, that you also don't experience misogyny because we've seen that. So it's just like instead of you just listening to black, dark skinned women when we speak about our instances with colorism and men as well, um, because it does happen to men. As I, as I said before, a lot of dark skinned men tend to believe that because they're dark skin and because a lot of the times they are fetishized that that somehow was a compliment and that's not in turn kind of colorism or it's not colorist that they don't think that they face colorism so when dark skin women are talking about it they tend to be like well i've never experienced that i've never seen that even though like i said a lot of times dark skin men also do participate in colorism in saying that they don't date dark skin women because they think that dark skin women are aggressive once again don't understand how you don't see at the same way that you're talking about dark skin women is the same way white people see you like i don't see how y'all don't get that but it's just like at this point at this point there is too much literature there is too much documentaries there's too much dissertations written there's too much good stuff out there google is freaking free there is no way that like i said in 2023 you don't know what colorism is like the fact that there's a name, there's a term for it shows you that enough people researched and did the work to, to make it a whole entire term to tell you what the hell it is. So for you to sit there and like I said, at this stage in the game, invalidate somebody's experience because either you didn't see it or you believe that your experience is worse or the same is crazy to me. It's crazy to me. And so shame on Megan James for that. Shame on her for that. Like I said, I don't know how she doing interviews to begin with. Somebody to tell me how the hell she get the authority to do that. But she definitely needs to issue some type of apology or something. Like, I, I don't understand what the hell that was about. But I, I really, what Monale, the way that Monale was able to handle that situation is like so unfortunate because it's so many times that that's what dark skin women have to go through. Like, how many times I've listened to conversations on colorism, especially on Clubhouse, and similar things happen where a dark skin person is talking about colorism, and every time there's a light skin person hijacking the space, trying to say, like, well, we all, we all black at the end of the day, so why does it matter? It's like, it does matter because, like I said, dark skin people are facing real life consequences for this. Dark skin people are being deprived of opportunities. They're being deprived of protection. They're being deprived of freedom, essentially. Like I said, there are dark skin people who are literally receiving harsher punishments because they're dark. So it's just like, no. Like, like I said, in 2023, if you don't, there's no reason, like I said, you don't understand what colorism is. Number two, there's no reason why you're trying to say to yourself when it's not the same thing. And at this point, you know that. Like, I'm, 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 I'm highly convinced of it. And it's just really unfortunate. But, like, that's really the bulk of what I have to say. I have several videos about colorism in the music industry and just colorism in general. So, if I will definitely put them in the cards, link them below for you guys to check out. But, like I said, it's just really unfortunate that this is what we started the year on like it's always so foolish it's like it's always so foolish but yeah y'all let me know all your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching i'll definitely see y'all in my next video peace out